This morning, we are getting a closer look at the toll that Alzheimer's disease is having on people across the country, especially here in Florida. According to a new special report from the Alzheimer's Association, about six and a half million Americans aged 65 and older here in the United States reported having Alzheimer's dementia last year. That includes 580,000 Floridians. And even more alarming is the number of people who have died as a result of the disease is up 145% in the last 22 years since 2000. Now, besides the loss of life, the cost to caregivers has also passed billions of dollars. This year alone, caregivers here in Florida are expected to spend $2.7 billion in care. That is a big financial burden on top of the emotional and physical toll that these families are facing. Keith Gibson is with the American is with the Alzheimer's Association is joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. Would you give us an idea of the scope of care that someone with Alzheimer's needs? It's it's a tremendous burden that our caregivers are dealing with on a daily basis. You're talking about um, anything um, regarding their activities of daily living from their ambulation, their bathing, their dressing, their eating, their grooming and toileting. And that in itself makes it a, a very daunting task for the caregiver, particularly um, when, you know, their focus is on their loved one. And it's not uncommon that the caregivers in their um effort to provide the best care and service for their loved one. They neglect their own their own care and well-being as well. Yeah, it's 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 really overwhelming. It's exhausting. It's heartbreaking for families who, who need help also caring for a loved one fighting this disease. I mean, what would you say is the biggest source of the financial strain? The biggest source of the financial strain is basically with the activities of daily living, having someone to assist them with their, the, the, you know, the bathing, the dressing, the eating, the grooming, the toileting, and the managing of their medications. Um, when you talk about caring for a spouse with dementia, there's a 30% increase in what we call depressive symptoms that's compared with spousal care for our partners without dementia. Um, the chronic care of care, chronic stress of caregiving is also associated with an, an increased um, incident of hypertension and a number of psychological changes that it would increase the risk of developing chronic conditions that include high levels of stress hormones impaired immune functions and slow wound healing and coronary heart disease. Well, and it makes sense too, because not only are you trying to care for that person, but, but you're, you're, you're not caring for yourself. I mean, so, so and, and the cost associated with this is only expected to continue to climb. So according to Alzheimer's Association's last report, which I'm sure you're familiar, by 2025, yeah. the cost of families caring for someone with this disease is projected to increase by 28%. To what do you attribute the increase, would you say? Well, you know, it's a full time job, you know, um, and so therefore with the, you know, the increased hours of care and support, you know, that's going to drive up the cost because, you, you know, you know, supervision is also important, you know, for caring for your loved one. And so they require your attention your full attention. So it's something, it's not like you can, you know, care for them part time. And so because it's a full time um, responsibility, that's going to drive up the cost all in itself. Everything seems to be costing more and more these days. I get it. So there's also a growing number of people who are being diagnosed. What are you seeing locally? Locally, in terms of in our report, um, we we have a special report um, addressing um, mild cognitive impairment. And um, mild cognitive impairment is often confused with normal aging, but it's not. It's an early stage of memory loss or other cognitive abilities that are lost, such as language or visual or spatial perception. It also causes cognitive changes that are serious enough to be noticed by the individual uh, affected and by their family members, but it's not serious enough to interfere with their daily activities of daily living. Um, some of the symptoms of mild cognitive impairment include forgetting conversations, misplacing items in the home, difficulty keeping uh, track of 
their train of thought, losing their way to once familiar places or feeling overwhelmed with making decisions or completing everyday tasks like paying a bill. Um, when we look at mild cognitive impairment, it's associated with um, what we call instrumental activities of daily living. Instrumental activities of daily living are those activities that require a higher level of mental and physical functioning. And they include activities such as your shopping, preparing meals, uh, doing house cleaning and housework, um, managing your finances, uh, managing medications, driving and talking on the telephone. Once you start seeing um, difficulties appear with those activity level activity areas, that's an indication that you definitely want to get yourself assessed. And, because and Keith, that is um, that is such an important point too, because we were just talking about this, in fact, yesterday about the importance of spotting those warning signs. So thank you for pointing those out for our viewers, and we appreciate your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you to be a service.